So we talked about the basics of a style. You have the style itself followed by its value. And they're separated by a colon and followed by a semicolon. You must follow that structure. However, we've got these three types, inline, embedded, and linked. Let's talk about each one of them. An inline style basically goes right in with the tag itself. So say you have the most common tag P and you have some text here and then you close that P. Well, here's a basic paragraph, but if you want to style that, you have to actually put in an attribute value pair, which looks like this, style equals quote, quote. And then inside the quotes, you actually put your style. So for example, if we wanted the color to be yellow, like that, we would put right in there, color, colon, yellow, semicolon. If we wanted to add something else, like the background color, we could put background dash color, colon, blue. And now we have an inline style that applies to this paragraph. It will apply to this and only this paragraph. And notice that we're basically this quote delineates switching from HTML here to styles here. We're switching languages like switching from German to Spanish or French to English. And so when you cross that border of the quotes, you're going to another world called style language. And then when we finish the quotes, we go back into good old HTML. Now that's an inline style. An embedded style is a little bit different. You go up in the head of your page, which will look something like this, and you have to add a style tag. And in this case, that style tag acts by itself. Um, and within that, this is now the border. We cross this border and we begin to speak a different kind of language, which is style language. And in this case, we don't know which style to apply it to. So we would put, for example, P, apply this to all paragraphs. And we put this code and then we could take that same stuff up here like this and this would basically go into this page that this head was on and apply where it found a paragraph it would apply these styles and I like to indent them a little bit to make them easier to read and if we wanted to do a different style to apply to say heading one we would do it like this and we would go in here and say for example I want my font font family to be Times New Roman. And since Times New Roman has separate has spaces in it, we'll put single quotes around them to be safe. As always, we follow with a semicolon, and I want it to be centered, so I'll put text align colon center. So what this does, it'll find the paragraphs and do these to it, and find the heading ones and do that to it. And you can add as many as you want. Again, these are in the head of the document you want them to apply to. So the downside is they can only apply to that one page. Then finally, we can have a separate style sheet entirely. And for the separate style sheet, we go into the head of our document. By the way, you might have to check this code for validation, but in that head, we create a link. And the link has an href, which is a hyperlink reference, to some other file. And that file we'll call styles.css. And you have to add some other things to the link tag. You can look up the link tag formatting. But basically, then we go over and we have a totally different page. So I'm going to write note, totally different file. And in that file, we have only styles, but they can look exactly like what went in your embedded style. So we copy that, and in that file is only CSS. We're only speaking styles. There's no HTML in here at all. Don't put an HTML head or body or anything. You have just the styles. It functions in the same manner, only now you can have five pages linked to this one file, and they will all work this way. So all the pages that link to this will make their paragraphs yellow on a blue background, pretty hideous probably, and make all the heading ones um, Times New Roman and centered. And you can add as many as you want. And just as a final note, there are two kind of special styles. Those that have a, a, pound, a dot in front of them are custom classes. So you could put something like DI's custom and you could, anything you want in this will be, I don't know, fuchsia, I'll put crimson. Right? So anything that, that is identified in your HTML as being DI custom will be crimson. Um, but these are more specialized and you can research a little bit into that. But note again, we have inline, we have embedded, also known as internal, and we have linked. And the, in, the exact syntax of the style is consistent. It's the style followed by colon followed by the value of that style and a semicolon. However, inline, they appear right inside your HTML as a style attribute value. When they're in the head, you put an open style tag and a closed style tag, and you switch languages here. And when they're a separate file, you just do all CSS and no HTML at all, and you give it a good name.